Have you ever wondered what would happen if Max Payne got sucked into 90s horror action film from dusk till dawn? Max is Dracula, Lord of the Vampires. She's conducting a ritual that will end the world as we know it. Hi, I'm Zeb, and today we're looking at the game attempting to answer that question, El Paso Elsewhere. EPE, as the cool kids call it, is a third-person bullet-time shooter in the vein of Max Payne or John Woo's Stranglehold. In El Paso Elsewhere, you play as James Savage as he looks to stop his ex-girlfriend and vampire queen, Dracula, from destroying the world. Pill addiction, bullet-time abilities, lady troubles. James Savage and Max Payne would be best friends if only they could ever meet. The game takes place in The Void, a supernatural landscape tearing apart a motel and reimagining it using its otherworldly powers. As Mr. Savage, you descend further and further into the void using your slow motion powers and an assortment of weapons to defeat vampires, werewolves, and other bloodthirsty creature of the night. All this while rescuing the innocent former occupants of the motel, so they can go back to their drug deals and extramarital affairs. <laughs> so what does El Paso Elsewhere get right? Starting with the setting, a somewhat mundane location spun out of control by the supernatural, it takes a surprising number of turns and is one of the game's strong points. The further you descend, the more chaotic the world around you becomes. A lot of the decor in these environments evaporate at the mere mention of bullets, which adds to the chaos in slow motion. The game oscillates between tight, oppressive corridors and wide open arenas where the combat can truly shine. The guns are punchy with intense muzzle flash, lighting up vampires like a WWF arena in the Attitude Era. Enemies die quickly and get team rocketed across the room once killed. The slow motion gameplay is a lot of fun and the slow motion powers become more and more necessary as enemies get deadlier and deadlier with larger health pools towards the end of the game. The characters are mostly well written. What? I... nothing. I just wasn't ready to say goodnight yet. And I enjoyed the cutscene framing of the elevator where James rides deeper into the abyss. Having said all that, the game does make a few missteps along the way. The soundtrack at times adds great atmosphere to some of the levels, but during others is just a distraction. It's given a bit too much prominence, with some tracks just not landing at all for me. While the voice acting is solid, the writing can fall a little flat at times. When most of James Savage's dialogue is either sad, depressing, or sad and depressing, I began to tune it out. The arsenal of weapons is fine, but do feel a little bland given the environment. James Savage is meant to be an expert of the supernatural and the occult, but you wouldn't know that from his choice of weapons. A bit more Constantine and a little less John Wick would have helped tie the weapons to the rest of the game. Finally, the level and enemy design slowly drops off towards the end of the game. Each enemy you've faced in classic video game design gets a stronger variant later in the game. But some of the scenarios it puts the player in with these enemies crosses the line from hard to just straight up bullshit. Enemy spawns don't take into consideration the player, and so you can suddenly and violently find yourself surrounded. The only way to avoid this is to die and try again, which can be really frustrating. Also, f puppeteers. If I kill the puppeteer, his puppet should die. End of story. Let's talk about the Steam Deck specifically. With the game using PS1-esque graphics, it's right in the deck's wheelhouse, with the system getting good playtime out of it. With levels taking between 7 and 15 minutes on average to complete, it's easily played in chunks and works well with the portability of the deck. Battery-wise, expect a good 2-3 to three hours of playtime on standard settings. Ironically, the issues I came across were more during my PC playtime, with enemies or their attacks occasionally breaking, a pot I once knocked over created a black cloud that covered the screen and caused my death, and enemies clipping through doors is a constant problem. For 
For me, it's a game of high highs and low lows. When everything is clicking, I'm having an absolute blast. But when it fell short, my fun turned to frustration. I enjoy hard games. I completed Lies of P last year and that game was hard as balls. But when I was dying in Lies, I could take responsibility for coming up short. In Elsewhere, often my deaths didn't feel like my fault at all and this left a bitter taste in my mouth. There is a good game here, is let down by a few design choices. I believe this was made by a small team or solo developer? It's not quite clear, but kudos to them. They should be very proud of the game that they have made, but there's just some elements that don't land for me. At the end of the day, all critiques aside, did I have fun with El Paso Elsewhere? Hell yeah I did. Maybe my main frustration is I see so much potential in it that it doesn't fully realize. If you're a fan of the original Max Payne games, or on a huge vampire kick at the moment like me, but... give it a go, and hopefully we'll see an update or two in the not too distant future. I'll be intrigued to see what this developer does next, and elsewhere too that resolves some of its issues and expands on the established concepts of the first is something I'd absolutely get excited for. Anyway, that's all I have for you today folks. What game would you like to see me cover next with the Steam Deck in mind? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, give us a subscribe, and I'll see you next time. This guy did loads of drugs. Scanning dick. He died of too many drugs. Tragic.